just such a great job on that. Let's proceed right on down the line with your text amendment for this evening, which is BA 2015 07. See it also text amendment. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a uh, proposed text amendment by the City of Aldo to Chapter 328 of the City's Land Development Regulations. This is the chapter pertaining to landscape buffers and screen. Um, in your packet um, are two different options of proposed amendments. I went through those at pretty good length um, at your work session. Um, this evening I've passed out some revised copies of those that I've placed at your seat in front of you. Um, there was little change to these, but I want you to note that option one is shaded in green at the top, option two is shaded in pink, otherwise they look very, very similar. If you look on the back side of one of those copies, such as option one, and look under amendment number five, here's where I'll point out the differences. Um, in that paragraph under section 328-36, we have changed the word punished to the word fine or fines. That's in two different places. It's in the bottom line of that paragraph. The original version we looked at, work session used the word punished. Um, on the advice of the city attorney, we have softened that to be fine, since the punishment has only to do with fines rather than jail time. It just seemed more appropriate. Um, the other thing is under where it says third or subsequent defenses in the past 12 months, uh, we're using underlined strikeout format. The copy that you had at your work session, the strikeout did not show through very well with the red ink. We have gone back in and re-word processed that. Um, so the strike through shows through. It is red and strike out, not just red. So we've made that clarification there for you. Otherwise, it is the same as what you looked at and discussed at your work session. Um, staff is recommending option number one, um, like we had talked about at the work session, um, which is to make some changes regarding Craig Myrtles, introduce a warning system for first time offenders, um, and do some other clarification changes here. Um, this set of amendments has been reviewed by the Chamber Sort Committee um, and are recommending approval to you of option number one. And I believe there's some representatives here from the Chamber who wish to comment on this for you. Matt, did you go over option number two that I just missed you talking about that? Well, option number one and two are very similar. The main difference is option number one makes those changes for great murals. Number two, effectively exempts crate murals from the topping requirement, but also removes crate murals from the city's tree list. So in other words, if they no longer be treated and protected like a tree, then they should not be regarded as a tree in terms of landscape height. So those are the main changes or differences between option one and option two, other than the other amendments that are common to both. Yes, there's any questions for staff regarding this, this request? I have one question, uh, if I may. Yes, sir. Several months ago, there was a, a text amendment where was the commercial property owners were going to be responsible for the easements or right-of-ways in front of their property where they hadn't been responsible for them in the past. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, they're all always have been responsible, but just added some language in some other parts of the LDR to clarify that in terms of maintenance of uh, Broadway strips. And that they were going to be responsible for right. of it. So trees in those areas come yes. under this. Uh, trees in those areas are on the city right of way, and they are under the custody of the city and under the protection of the city. But the rules are going to be the same if it's commercial property. One time that would be different to be in residential property. Who's responsible for pruning the trees? That, if it's in the city right of way, it's the city. So it wouldn't be the commercial property owner as far as that. And the maintenance of it, I've seen a no and a yes. I think the reference that you're making to that changes that were made to the right of way were actually in terms of like mowing the right of way. Um, but as far as trees that's always New responsibility did not include the trees. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions <clears throat> from staff on this request? 
There being none, anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? Chamber of Commerce does agree with the recommendation coming to you from staff and our short committee has met and reviewed the two options that are being proposed in detail. I have Alan Deere who is actually present tonight, who's chairman of our short committee. And so that y'all are aware, the short committee's sole purpose is to promote a pro-business environment in Dallas and Lyons County and works to um, see that pro-business initiatives Put in place, and this this is one of those we believe our position is very uh, straightforward. I just want to make three points quickly. Um, we believe that option number one in eliminating uh, the remove and replace requirement for property owners who have topped their prep myrtles um, with a first warning would be certainly appropriate, followed by the graduated fines that have been suggested. Um, we think it's a positive thing that threat of jail time is being removed uh, and we are aware that the city has already begun efforts to educate uh, not just the property owner but also those that are, are doing the work, the, the landscapers and um, those maintaining the property uh, and that will have a positive effect uh, as well. Uh, in addition, we didn't think it would be proper to uh, <coughs> remove uh, the grape myrtle as a usable tree in a landscape process because it is an economical alternative for property owners. Uh, comparable trees can cost much more than that. So if you remove it and it becomes a shrub, you still got to plant a certain number of trees, it could become very costly. I do have uh, a really a summary of our position um, for each of you. Mr. Chairman, if you'd like me to do this, that'd be great to do that. Since 
this standard references the ANSI specs for proper pruning. Is there a mechanism in place where, whereby all of the people who are in the business of landscaping are certified through the city and they have training and they're aware of the ANSI specs and, and they've been through training to know how to properly prune? They, depends on the, what their level of licensing is, and I can let Emily elaborate on this. Uh, we make reference to those standards um, on the city's website. We have links to websites where those can be downloaded. We're not, because of copyright issues, we cannot just give those away, but people can obtain those for themselves. We do, of course, have copies of ours for ourselves um, that perhaps we can share portions of, um, but those are nationally um, used standards that a very well experienced, qualified landscaper probably has anyway. Um, some of the small operations perhaps not. But that's part of our educational efforts is to make them one aware of the standards and hopefully facilitate a way for them to get a copy. Yes, sir, one thing we did change since we had our meeting last week is on our website, if you just go to myofficecity.com forward slash arbor, at the bottom you can find actually the requirements. We put on there the um, ISA link which you can go in to download each of the ANSI standards. We're also in the process, because uh, right now they're $20 per booklet, um, and what we're doing right now is trying to get permission from ANSI, um, as well as through ISA, to basically allow us to make copies of when people come in. Um, if they'll give us permission to do that, then we're also going to see if they'll allow us to just make the electronic copies they could download as well, so we'd have that easily available for anyone. Well, just one question. I just looked at this thing as far as the fine situation goes. Do you ever see a, an incident where the property owner and the landscaper both are fine? No, sir. Um, the way that we've done it pretty much in the past has gone towards the property owner. Um, as I think I mentioned before, in some cases the property owner would not provide the landscape company's name. So in those cases we have to go after them. But we did add the additional, la the additional language that would identify the landscaper as someone that we could cite, and that'll be what we do first, is we'll go after the landscape company first, and then again, if they will not provide that information, then we will have to go after the, land the actual property owner. And as we go forward, I know you said you said that on the city's website they go and find all this stuff. Yes, sir. But what is a direct educational tool, not online, that's going to be given to the media landscapers and God knows, is it going to be a mail out done to the business owners and the landscapers or going forward? What do you see is the measure there. Um, the, excuse me, the first thing that we're going to do is actually when you come to renew your business license or get a new one, we've actually created a special provisions form which highlights the key items which does address the topping issue as well as printing practices. So we'll have every landscape company that when they come in they'll sign that, they'll get a copy of that, and then of course we can tell them where they can actually find our ordinance, and then again they can go in there and download the additional information. Additional things that we're going to work on is the training. Um, as we mentioned, we just had our first training for tree pruning in February, which was well received, and we're looking at doing additional trainings. As well, as well as welcoming um, some of the different state agencies to Bell House to help us do some additional education. So we really want to be hands-on, not just mail-outs. We'll continue to do the mail-outs. As I mentioned, we have over 200 um, landscape companies that we have their contact information for. We'll keep doing it that way, but again, we'd rather kind of have a little bit more direct interaction with them than just mail-outs, because I feel like they can learn a lot more hands-on oh, than just through the uh, mail -out. But we want to make sure we're providing those resources. <coughs> At what point are you going to start finding these people you're starting to train right now? Yes, sir. Um, well, again, they will have their first warning. Um, so right now, if they go in and talk, which pretty much all the topping has been done for this year, so now everything's starting to green up. So we should hopefully be able to do enough education before the next training cycle comes in. So that will be our hope. Like I said, we, we hope to do quarterly training. Um, and then, again, if we can do more, then we'll incorporate that in as well. But we hope that right now we won't see any more printing like that until the next season. And by then, we should have contacted everybody by then. And just as a reminder, commissioners, all of these regulations are for commercial properties. And of course, the commercial landscapers that are the, the top priority target for getting this information to. This does not apply to single family residential properties. You mentioned first warning. The only warning they get would be a proposal one on crepe myrtle. They don't get a warning on an oak tree or. Correct. This is specifically for crepe myrtles. And if I understood during the work session, they said if they misprune one or top one that it has to be replaced if there's no other remedy? Um, again, like the example that we gave for you guys um, last week was for the live oak, the 27 inch that they've been. They said they were pruning, but they removed more than two thirds of the canopy. There's no recovery for that tree. So in those cases, it would have to be a removal and then a replacement. 
I think the reason that we looked at really, and again, there's no other community that actually offered a warning for prairie myrtles, but they are extremely resilient. So we feel like we can work with those different landscapers on that. And another thing that we're going to look at with that warning is actually an educational fire that would tell them how to properly prune them. When will the replace come into play on a crate myrtle? Um, the replacement wouldn't come in for the crate myrtles unless they, um, it just completely kills the tree. I and mean, that's the only way that will come back in. The replacement will come with other types of trees. Second question with regard to crate myrtles. Is the, is the offense here, if you have 25 crate myrtles on your property and you top all of them, is that one offense or 25? 25 offenses. Okay, because that's not the way it was recently with the warnings and fines that were issued and everything. It was one event for all the, for all the trees on one property. So my has always been per tree. Each tree, that's a separate thing. <laughs> okay. Because that's, yeah, that, that's generally not how the running language reads, nor was it done that way in recent history when all the offenses, I mean, I saw three of the offenses that were written, and they were written per property. And this is this references trees and references all the trees. I guess the point I'm getting at is there's a loophole here. Is if you got 30 trees on the property and you get one offense, it's cheaper to pay the fine than to deal with. Correct, right, but now we've only had the arbitration for three years. Um, it wasn't a previous department, but we can check with Hansel why we can work with. Um, but as long as we've had it, it has been a citation for tree. Whether it was removal. The ones that brought all this to life in the last six months were for property. Can you, can you say that the replacement has not been effective? The replacement of, of crate water trees is. Right, because what they'll work is if they get the top of it to so today, they would get a warning. And then they'll basically give them information on how to prune that tree back and start proper motion. Um, then again, if they come back and top it again, then they would get. something that somebody would call and tell y'all they did though, right? Right. If someone came, the way that we've done our citation recently has been where it's been a complaint that we've received from the public and we want to have to check on it. So we are not riding around looking for the citation. There are two people in our arbor division. Um, so if he's really looking more for hazards along the roads, um, there's some work work and stuff like that. Any questions? Well, this doesn't apply to private landowners. I mean, like, you're I got a house um, in the city. This is just for commercial business <coughs> offices, doctors' offices, and stuff like that. And in your packet, you actually have a copy of, I believe at that point, it was 110 commercial property that we found that the crate mortals were actually being turned properly. Um, so we believe, in actually, in most cases, you're going to find that crate mortals actually being maintained properly. You just notice it more when it is topped. Um, but in most cases, I think that I think it actually has been a residential neighborhood that's not necessarily. And I would like to point out that three years we've had the Arbor Division, the first year was um, Kevin's year that he had the most citations, which was 27. Um, 25 of those were actually for tree topping. Um, so when you look at it, for the overall businesses, um, licenses that we have, it was 0.6%. So we really didn't have a lot of citations that were being issued out for public Very small. And thanks for your patience. Commissioners, any other discussion before we put a motion together? Before we put a motion together? With that being said, no further discussion. Commissioner and I will be glad to take a motion concerning the text amendment with option one and option two sitting before you this evening. Move we recommend approval of option one to the city council of the proposed LDR amendments. We have a first, we have a motion by Commissioner Fulton, a second by Commissioner Gladwin. All in favor of option one, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed? 4-2, approval carries. <coughs> 